Welcome to Science 9 class. I am Maria Lourdes E. Perez. Today, we are going to talk about the respiratory system. Before we start with our lesson proper, please answer the pre assessment. For online learning, Open your Google Classroom or visit the link that will be given by your teacher. For modular learning, please get your learning module and open it on page 3 to 4. You have 6 minutes to finish the pre-test. Please answer honestly, good luck. This video instruction was based on the Department of Education Most Essential Learning Competency No. 1. Explain how the respiratory and circulatory systems work together to transport nutrients gases and other molecules to and from the different parts of the body. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to First, define respiration operationally. Second, Differentiate the internal and external respiration. Third, identify the parts of respiratory system. Fourth, explain the function of the different organs. Answer this orally. Can you live without water for a few days? Can you live without food for a few weeks? How about if you stop breathing for more than a few minutes? Remember. You can survive for several days without water and survive for a month without food, but you cannot survive for more than 5 minutes without oxygen. It is a part of the air that we breathe. Without this constant intake of air, the cells of your body would die quickly. Our cells need a continuous supply of oxygen to support its activity which supplies energy to the body. As a result of this energy-producing process, cells perform all the vital tasks and keep you alive. Getting to know the respiratory system helps us understand our body better. Read on and perform the activities prepared for you in this module. Are you ready for another activity? Let's find out together. Grab your pen, answer sheets, and look into your module. Answer this activity. The title for activity 1 is 4 picks in one word. Directions, using the 4 pictures, guess the word being described. For numbers 4 and 5, guess the word associated with the picture below.
How did you find the activity 1? Please check your answers at the answer key section and see how you did. Don't worry if you got a low score, this just means that there are more things that you can learn from this module. So, hop on. Animal cells generate ADP in aerobic respiration, which consumes oxygen and generated carbon dioxide as a waste product. Respiration is the physical movement of air into and out of the body. Is the act of exchanging gases. Respiration is the movement of air or dissolved gases into and out of the lungs or movement of oxygen from the outside environment to the cells within tissues, and the transport of carbon dioxide in the opposite direction. Respiratory System, Oxygen Delivery System the respiratory system is the set of organs that allows a person to breathe and exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body. The integrated system of organs involved in the intake and exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the body and the environment and including the nasal passages, larynx, trachea, bronchial tubes, and lungs. The respiratory system performs two major tasks. Exchanging air between the body and the outside environment known as external respiration. Bringing oxygen to the cells and removing carbon dioxide from them referred to as internal respiration. Are you ready for another activity? Let's find out together. Grab your pen, answer sheets, and look into your module. Activity 2 is entitled Define Me. Directions, read the questions carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Number 1. Which is the correct definition of respiration? Justify your answer. A. Respiration is the act of exchanging gases. B. Respiration is the act of using carbon dioxide and producing oxygen as a waste product. Number 2. Internal respiration is A. The gas exchange between an organism's body and its environment. B. The gas exchange between tissue cells and bloodstream. Let's see if you answered correctly. Now, get your module and check your answer honestly. The parts of the respiratory system that are in charge of supplying oxygen are the nose, nasal passageways, windpipe, lungs, and diaphragm. In the nose and nasal passages, the entering air is made warm, damp, and clean of unknown particles. Next, the air moves down through the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. Trachea is the empty tube that serves as passageway of air into the lungs. Bronchi are the two branching tubes that connect the trachea to the lungs. Bronchioles are the hair-like tubes that connect to the alveoli. Alveoli are the air sacs that allow gas exchange in the lungs. Are you ready for another activity? Let's find out together. Grab your pen, answer sheets, and look into your module. Let's try this. Activity 3. What a bunch of grapes. 
Label the parts of the respiratory system. Number 1. What does each part of the bunch of grapes model represent, in relation to the breathing system? A. Main stem B. Large branching stems C. Little stems D. Individual grapes Number 2. What will happen if one part of the system fails to carry out its function properly? Let's see if you answered correctly. Now, get your module and check your answer honestly. You're doing great. Give yourself a tap on your back and say good job. Now, let's try some more activity to further enhance your understanding. Are you ready? Label the parts of the respiratory system. Number 7. What is the body system represented in the picture? Number 8. How do you describe the pathway of oxygen in the breathing system? Congratulations, 
you have finished the first part of this module. Please check your answers by referring to the answer key. If you scored lower than 15 from activity 1 to 4, please go over the earlier parts of this module and take on the activities once again. If you scored 15 or above, please proceed with the succeeding activity. Respiratory system. To understand the process of breathing. In humans, the main organs responsible for respiration are present in the thoracic cavity. In the thorax region, the rib cage and a dome shaped fibrous tissue known as the diaphragm are observed. Present within the rib cage are the pleural membranes, which enclose the lungs. The right lung is divided into three lobes, the right superior, right middle, and the right inferior lobe. The left lung is smaller and has only two lobes, the left superior and the left inferior lobe. Both the lungs are associated externally with small tubular bronchi, which unite and extend into the trachea. The trachea has incomplete C-shaped rings of cartilage, which prevent the tracheal wall from collapsing. The trachea leads into the pharynx, which is connected to the nostrils. As we breathe in air, the oxygen molecules enter the nostrils and travel downwards through the pharynx and trachea to finally reach the bronchi. From each bronchus, oxygen travels into the lungs. Within the lungs, the bronchus divides repeatedly to form bronchioles. Oxygen travels through these bronchioles and reaches the alveoli, each of which is surrounded by a network of capillaries. A section of one alveolus shows the presence of numerous alveolar chambers with pores. Blood, containing RBCs, is seen flowing through the capillaries. The oxygen molecules from the alveolus diffuse into the capillary and then get absorbed by the bluish-purple RBCs. This causes oxygenation of the RBCs and a transition in their color from bluish-purple to red is observed. The blood moving into the alveolus contains RBCs and carbon dioxide molecules. These molecules are released into the alveolus. The carbon dioxide collects in the alveolar chamber. And then from the alveolus, it travels through the bronchioles. Into the bronchus, which finally reaches the trachea and is breathed out through the nostrils. So the process of breathing in air rich in oxygen is called inhalation. After the contraction of the muscular diaphragm, the lungs expand and the air rushes in, resulting in the inflation of the alveoli. During exhalation, the diaphragm moves up and the lungs contract. Thus, the alveoli deflate, causing the air to be forced out. This exhaled air is rich in carbon dioxide. This process of inhalation and exhalation is known as respiration, which is approximately 20 times per minute. Summary. In the thorax region, the rib cage and the diaphragm are observed, which play a vital role in respiration. Present within the rib cage are the pleural membranes, 
which enclose the lungs. The right lung consists of three lobes, while the left lung has only two lobes. Both the lungs are associated externally with bronchi, which unite and extend into the trachea. As we breathe, the oxygen molecules enter the nostrils and travel downwards through the pharynx and trachea to finally reach the bronchi. From each bronchus, oxygen travels into the lungs. Within the lungs, the bronchus divides repeatedly to form bronchioles. Oxygen travels through these bronchioles and reaches the alveoli, each of which is surrounded by a network of capillaries. As blood flows through the capillaries, the oxygen molecules from the alveolus diffuse into the capillary. This causes oxygenation of the RBCs. The carbon dioxide molecules are released into the alveolus. They are collected in the alveolar chamber, and then from the alveolus, it travels through the bronchioles. into the bronchus, which finally reaches the trachea and is breathed out through the nostrils. Let's continue. When you breathe in, or inhale, the diaphragm muscle contracts. Inhaling moves the diaphragm down and expands the chest cavity. Simultaneously, the ribs move up and increase the size of the chest cavity. There is now more space and less air pressure inside the lungs. Air pushes in from the outside where there is a higher air pressure. It pushes into the lungs where there is a lower air pressure. When you breathe out, or exhale, the diaphragm muscle relaxes. The diaphragm and ribs return to their original place. The chest cavity returns to its original size. There is now less space and greater air pressure inside the lungs. It pushes the air outside where there is lower air pressure. Are you ready for another activity? Let's find out together. Grab your pen, answer sheets, and look into your module. Activity 5 Breathe in, breathe out. Directions, look at the pictures below. Classify them whether it is inhalation or exhalation. Activity 5. Breathe in, breathe out. Directions, look at the pictures below. Classify them whether it is inhalation or exhalation.
questions. Number 11. What is inhalation? Number 12. What is exhalation? Number 13. How does the movement of the diaphragm cause the air to go in and out of the lungs? Let's see if you answered correctly. Now, get your module and check your answer honestly. Lungs are sealed in pleural membranes inside the chest cavity. At the bottom of the cavity is a large, flat muscle known as the diaphragm. During inhalation, the diaphragm contracts and the rib cage rises up. This expands the volume of the chest cavity. The chest cavity is sealed, so this creates a partial vacuum inside the cavity. Atmospheric pressure fills the lungs as air rushes into the breathing passages. Often, exhaling is a passive event. When the rib cage lowers and diaphragm relaxes, the pressure in the chest cavity is greater than atmospheric pressure. The air pressure is pushed out of the lungs. The functions of respiratory system are as follows. It supplies the body with oxygen and disposes of carbon dioxide. It filters inspired air. It produces sound. It contains receptors for smell. It rids the body of some excess water and heat. And it helps regulate blood pH. Breathing is also known as pulmonary ventilation. These consists of two cyclic phases. Inhalation is also called inspiration where it draws gases into the lungs. Exhalation, is also called expiration where it forces gases out of the lungs. External Respiration Air from the outside environment enters the nose or mouth during inspiration or inhalation. It composed of the nose and nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses, pharynx, or throat, larynx. All part of the conducting portion of the respiratory system. Oxygen movement into the blood. The alveoli always has more oxygen than the blood. Oxygen moves by diffusion towards the area of lower concentration. Pulmonary capillary blood gains oxygen.
carbon dioxide movement out of the blood. Blood returning from tissues has higher concentrations of carbon dioxide than air in the alveoli. Pulmonary capillary blood gives up carbon dioxide. Blood leaving the lungs is oxygen rich and carbon dioxide poor. Oxygen transport in the blood. Inside red blood cells attached to hemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin. A small amount is carried dissolved in the plasma. Carbon dioxide transport in the blood. Most is transported in the plasma as bicarbonate ion. A small amount is carried inside red blood cells on hemoglobin, but at different binding sites than those of oxygen. Internal respiration Exchange of gases between blood and body cells. An opposite reaction to what occurs in the lungs. Carbon dioxide diffuses out of tissue to blood. Oxygen diffuses from blood into tissue. The figure shows internal respiration. The figure shows a summary of external respiration, gas transport, and internal respiration. The parts and functions of the respiratory system. Nose. Also called external nares. Divided into two halves by the nasal septum. Contains the paranasal sinuses where air is warmed. Contains cilia which is responsible for filtering out foreign bodies. Internal nares. This is the opening to exterior. External nares. This is the opening to pharynx. Nasal conchi, it folds in the mucous membrane that increase air turbulence and ensures that most air contacts the mucous membranes. Provides an airway for respiration. Moistens and warms entering air. Filters and cleans inspired air. Resonating chamber for speech detects odors in the air stream. Pharynx Common space used by both the respiratory and digestive systems. Commonly called the throat. Originates posterior to the nasal and oral cavities and extends inferiorly near the level of the bifurcation of the larynx and esophagus. Common pathway for both air and food. Walls are lined by a mucosa and contain skeletal muscles that are primarily used for swallowing. Flexible lateral walls are diastensible in order to force swallowed food into the esophagus. Larynx. Voice box is a short, somewhat cylindrical airway ends in the trachea. Prevents swallowed materials from entering the lower respiratory tract. Conducts air into the lower respiratory tract. Produces sounds. Supported by a framework of nine pieces of cartilage, three individual pieces and three cartilage pairs, 
that are held in place by ligaments and muscles. Trachea A flexible tube also called windpipe. Extends through the mediastinum and lies anterior to the esophagus and inferior to the larynx. Cartilage rings reinforce and provide rigidity to the tracheal wall to ensure that the trachea remains open at all times. At the level of the sternal angle, the trachea bifurcates into two smaller tubes, called the right and left primary bronchi. Each primary bronchus projects laterally toward each lung. The alveoli are moist, thin-walled pockets which are the site of gas exchange. A slightly oily surfactant prevents the alveolar walls from collapsing and sticking together. The parts of bronchi Primary bronchi Secondary bronchi Tertiary bronchi Bronchioli Terminal bronchi Bronchioles This is the smallest branches of the bronchi. All but the smallest branches have reinforcing cartilage. The terminal bronchioles end in alveoli. Lungs. Each lung has a conical shape. Its wide, concave base rests upon the muscular diaphragm. Its superior region called the apex projects superiorly to a point that is slightly superior and posterior to the clavicle. Both lungs are bordered by the thoracic wall anteriorly, laterally, and posteriorly, and supported by the rib cage. Toward the midline, the lungs are separated from each other by the mediastinum. The relatively broad, rounded surface in contact with the thoracic wall is called the costal surface of the lung. The lung has two parts. Left lung. It is divided into two lobes by oblique fissure. It is smaller than the right lung. The cardiac notch accommodates the heart. Right lung. Is divided into three lobes by oblique and horizontal fissure. Located more superiorly in the body due to liver on right side. Right lung are consist of right lobes, right bronchi, secondary bronchi, bronchioles, while left lung are consist of left lobes. Left bronchi, alveoli. Congratulations on finishing the supplementary learning module. You have just had an amazing learning journey and for sure, you will have the same in the succeeding modules. This time, share to the class your final insights by completing the following sentence prompts. Remember the following terms to help you understand the respiratory process. Trachea it is also called windpipe. A hollow tube that serves as passageway of air into the lungs. Bronchi also known as bronchial tubes. Two branching tubes that connect the trachea to the lungs. Nose it is the organ through which the air enters and is filtered. Nasal passages it serve as channel for airflow through the nose in which the air is warmed, cleaned, and moistened. Bronchioles, is the finer subdivisions of the bronchi. Hair-like tubes that connect to the alveoli. Alveoli, is also called air sacs, it allows the gas exchange in lungs. The air we breathe goes through the nose, nasal passages, and then through the trachea or windpipe, which separates into two branches, called bronchial tubes or bronchi, one entering each lung.
The bronchi subdivide many times inside the lungs, analogous to the branching pattern of grapes, finally becoming hair-like tubes called bronchioles. In the last part of the terminal bronchioles are tiny bubble-like bunch structures called alveoli or air sacs. Inhaling moves the diaphragm down and expands the chest cavity. Simultaneously, the ribs move up and increase the size of the chest cavity. There is now more space and less air pressure inside the lungs. Air pushes in from the outside where there is higher air pressure. It pushes into the lungs where there is lower air pressure. Do you have a question? Clarifications? Suggestions? For online learning, open your Google Classroom or Facebook group page and click the link posted by your teacher. For modular learning, Get your printed module and open the post-test on page. Write your answer in the answer sheet provided. Congratulations on finishing this module. You did a great job. Keep learning and be safe at home. Till next time.